A-B testing is a technique used to compare multiple experimental variations of the same application to determine which one is more effective with users. So let's say we have two variations, variation A and variation B. And variation B did much better than variation A. We'd assume that's because our users really liked variation B. But what if variation A had a serious bug that prevented many users from converting? The problem is that many teams don't automate tests for both variations because it's throwaway code and you're not entirely sure which variation you'll get each time your test runs. And if you did write automation, you might need a bunch of conditional logic in your test code to handle both variations. What if instead of writing and maintaining all of this code, we used visual testing instead? Would that make things easier? Why yes, yes it would. I could write one test and instead of coding all the differences between the two variations, I could simply do the visual check and provide it with photos of both variations. That way, if either one of the variations comes up and there are no bugs, the test will pass. Let's try this on a real site. Here's a website that has two variations. What we're looking at now is variation B. And as we scroll this, we see there's this product section and there's three rows of two products each. There's this about section and the location and other details at the bottom. And this site is done in pink and yellow color scheme. If we refresh this site, we don't know what we're to get. We can get either variation. So see this time we got variation A and this is blue and green colors. This one says services instead of products. There are only two rows here with three different services. The text on the about is a little bit different and we have the footer as well. So if we wanted to write automation for this and let's say we wanted to do some visual testing, we could do that and cover both variations. Let's look at the code. Okay, I have one test here and I'm gonna use Applitude's eyes to handle this AB test. So I open eyes just like I normally would. Because the page is pretty long, I'm gonna do set force full page screenshot. And also we saw that there was a sticky header here, meaning when we scroll, the header still stays here. So for this reason, I'm adding this set stitch mode so that it doesn't capture that sticky header in all of the pictures. And then finally, I'm gonna do my check window followed by closing eyes. So let's go ahead and run this to get the first variation. Okay, so that test passed. Let's look at this in the dashboard. So here is our test. And if we open this here, we see that it's a new test. There's no baseline yet. So this will become our new baseline, which is variation B. But what happens when we run this again and we end up with variation A? Let's try it. So I'm gonna run this again. Hopefully this time we'll get variation A. Nope, it's variation B again, that's fine. So we'll let that run and we'll just keep running it again until we get variation A. So this is how A-B testing works, right? You never know which one you're gonna get. Okay, finally, we got variation A now. So we're gonna let this run. And we see that the test has failed. Let's go to the dashboard. Okay, so we see here that yes, we have two different variations. So it's highlighting the differences. I'm gonna take that part off just so we can look at it clearly. Okay, so yes, we see we have variation B and we have variation A. Of course, these two sites do not match at all, right? However, we know that we want both of these to be valid options. It's really simple to do. You click this AB. So we have this first variation here, and this is the pink and yellow one. So this one represents variation B. So we're just gonna say create new. 
and that's going to save this other variation. So we'll say variation A and create. And voila, now you notice the test is marked as pass, and now we have two different variations. Other things that we can do here, we can rename them. So see, this one is just called default. I can use this pencil icon and name this one variation B and click rename. I can delete a variation. So if we decide to remove one of the variations from the product, I can simply delete it from my checkpoints as well. Okay, so we've added that new variation. I'm gonna close this and we're going to save this. So this is now marked as pass. Let's run a few more times and see if we can get A and B again and make sure that it's still passing. All right, great, we got variation A this time and we know that our original baseline is variation B. And this has passed. And let's try again. Great, we got variation B this time. And we see that that has also passed. Let's go to the dashboard. Okay, clicking on one of these, we see, yes, it's going to match this one because it's going to find the variation that matches it. And if we go here, we'll look at this one. This was the blue one. And you see that it matched that one with variation A and it has the label which one it was matched against. So as long as the page matches one of these variations, the test will still pass. <music>